Bonjour et bienvenue à l'Alliance française de Chicago. Uh, my name is Aimé Laberge and I'm the director of program and it is my honor to launch the 2022 edition of the Festival de la Francophonie, the French World Fest, with you. La Francophonie, what is it? Well, La Francophonie is 300 million French speakers in 35 countries across five continents. It's also 135 million students of French worldwide. And I know many of you are students of French with us to, today. Uh, this year, uh, our festival returns both online and on site to celebrate Francophone food, films and music from around the world. Admission is free to all programs except our closing night, and most programs are in English and French. No raclette at the kickoff evening this year, we are sorry, but we will have a closing evening with songs from around the world to get everybody together. And where do we start today? We start en Suisse. And to tell us how to eat better, live better, not Chicago style, we welcome Olivier Joliet, the Swiss-born nutrition specialist from the University of Michigan. But first, I would like to introduce the Consul General of Switzerland in Chicago, the Honorable Bruno Riff. À vous, Monsieur le Consul. Thank you, Aimé. Well, the prevailing tragic situation in Eastern Europe, causing the loss of too many innocent lives, casts a long and dark shadow over this month's long planned annual celebration. However, it seems more important than ever to offer space to culture, to transnational dialogue and cooperation. That is exactly what the Francophonie is celebrating values, a language and culture shared by many nations and peoples. For years now, the Swiss Benevolent Society has organized in cooperation with the Alliance Francaise of Chicago, the Swiss contribution, a wonderful example of cooperation in friendship. Thank you, Aimé. Thank you, Alliance Francaise, for being such a valuable platform for Francophone and Francophile in Chicago. The Swiss Benevolent Society was founded 150 years ago following the destruction caused by the Great Chicago Fire in order to help and support needy compatriots who had lost their home and their income. In the meantime, the Swiss Benevolent Society is investing in young talents, in students, and in the cultural exchange between Switzerland and Chicago. A driving force in this work of the past decades has been a wonderful human being, uh, the coordinator and organizer of today's event, and who keeps this traditional organization very much anchored in today's realities, investing in the future cultural understanding and dialogue. It is my pleasure to hand over with gratitude to this wonderful young lady and dear friend, Marie, Madame Marie Simon Pavlovich. I want to thank Consul General Bruno Rief for his kind words. Uh, indeed, it's a big year for the Swiss Benevolent Society of Chicago as we celebrate the 150 years of its foundation. The celebratory event we are preparing um, will be enhanced by the launching of a Swiss beer, Hop Swiss, which will be a reminder uh, that the first commercial brewery in Chicago was founded in 1833 by a Swiss immigrant, Andrew Salzer, and a German associate, William Haas. The brewery was called the Haas and Salzer Brewery. As chair of the Culture Committee of the Swiss Benevolent Society of Chicago, it has always been a great pleasure to introduce Swiss culture, of course, but also to show the innovative side of Switzerland that people are less familiar with. So today, 
I'm delighted to present our speaker, Professor Olivier Joliet, who is Swiss and comes from the canton of Vaud, next to my canton of Geneva. We both speak the French language, but there's a way to tell that we are not from the same region. A subtle distinction coming from the way we call the lake. In Geneva, we talk about the lac de Genève, which is the translation used in all the languages. Whereas in the canton of Vaud, our neighbor, the Vaudois call it Lac Léman, an appellation going back to the Roman times. So you can tell right away that when somebody is talking about Lac Léman, the person is not from Geneva. It's a foreigner. Well, let's leave these semantic disputes and talk seriously. Professor Olivier Joliet is a professor of environmental impact uh, health sciences at the School of Public Health at the University of Michigan, author of 200 plus articles and guest of many media stations. With his colleagues, he pioneered and led the study to determine the environmental impact associated with agriculture. He developed the use of a cycle assessment framework known as LCA that allows the entire production chain to be analyzed for a variety of applications. He has compared nutritional and environment impacts of food systems, determining minutes of healthy life gained and lost for 5,800 individual foods. This research was reported by more than a thousand news media and has been the source of some shocking results. One among them that will discourage all the baseball fans of Chicago to enjoy the best part of the game. And here I'm talking about sinking your teeth in a delicious hot dog. Yes, it was determined that one can lose 36 minutes of healthy life per hot dog. But it's not the end. You can gain 25 minutes with a serving of peanuts. Numbers that bring me to this question. What happens if you eat a hot dog and the peanuts right after? You lose only 10 minutes. But I will leave the discussion of this topic to Professor Joliet with the title of his presentation. Eat better, live better, the Swiss way. À vous, Monsieur le Professeur. Merci beaucoup. Vous pouvez voir mon écran. You can see my screen. Yes. Okay, so very nice. Uh, thank you for the invitation tonight. Uh, I'm honored to be uh, in the French Alliance and uh, 
representing for what our, our Swiss country, uh, country of Switzerland, which is, which is great. By the way, this is the Lake of Geneva. This is, uh, and uh, Lausanne is here. Geneva is hidden far behind. You know, when our two teams, soccer team played together, this is the, these are big games. Uh, nice rivalry uh, in that case. And uh, so the question is why, why would a Swiss person having a chalet here uh, from his grandfather leave his mountains and come to Michigan? And uh, today I will, I will show you a bit that it, it can be interesting to mix some of the Swiss way and the American way uh, here at, uh, at the University of, of Michigan. And all these themes, uh, I, I'm in fact at the Environmental Health Science uh, Department of the Public um, School of Public Health uh, at Michigan. And I came here because of the interdisciplinary research carried out here. And just to give you an example, um, it, it, it has been very interesting in, in the last, uh, we had three rounds of what we call we cube. And when we cube, we take three professor, which must be uh, at least of two different schools or colleges. And we write an abstract on 150 words. We take $6,000 from our reserve, but we are matched by $12,000 each of us. And we have $60,000 in two hours later to start a project which should be interdisciplinary and, and, and break new ground. And in fact, uh, uh, some of what I've presented has been supported uh, by, by one of this uh, uh, project. So we could say that, that dietary risk is a leading risk factor, in fact, in the world, both for nutrition and for the environment. And it's estimated that it is the global burden of disease that it's about half a million deaths per year. It, it's comparable, in fact, to the deaths of the, of the COVID in some respect uh, that we have associated with, with uh, uh, non-healthy diet or unhealthy diet or, or not enough healthy diet in that case. The agriculture is also responsible for uh, ammonia emission, which create and combine with, with uh, uh, industrial emission to create fine particulate, which might be also a problem. Agriculture contributes also to the carbon footprint. Basically, uh, a large share is through methane emissions in that case. And of course, to the, it is a large share of the land use worldwide uh, uh, that we have. So, of course, they are the intended consequence that we, we need to eat. And, and this is the challenge is to, to feed uh, the, the billions of people in the planet. In a sense, uh, uh, agriculture has made great progress uh, in the last 50, 60 years to, to meet that and to be able to do that. But at the same time, the environmental consequences to, to, for food production have unintended consequences. And as I mentioned methane, we have deforestation. We have, in fact, a very large use of water for irrigation in the US, for example, especially on the West Coast, not, not so much uh, in, in uh, the Great Lakes area. Uh, fertilizer are, are excessive, and, and here we see for Lake Erie, we see this problem of eutrophication of Lake Erie, where, where the algae are, are growing too fast uh, and can be even toxic. Uh, we have the use of pesticide and, and as we say, bioconcentration of some toxic in, in the food chain uh, that we have. So we have all sorts of, of impact uh, there. But at the same time, there is, I would say, there is hope that because we, can, we have many choices and many, many points of action uh, that, that we can do. Now, how can we achieve then, regarding these challenges, a healthy and sustainable diet? First, it's difficult for a consumer where just here on dairy products, you have such a choice. And what should I choose if I, if I enter a supermarket I have a million product in, in, in front of me and I have thousands of different foods uh, that I could ch choose. And we need some easy to understand labels, easier than the like six dimensional label with saturated fat, sugar, uh, uh, calcium, et cetera, that we have uh, normally. And we would like the nutrition inside to be health-based. And that was one goal of our, our work. 
Second, as often in, in university and in our world, you have the nutritionist, nutritional people working on one hand, and you have the environmental people on the other end. In fact, I'm, I'm coming from the environmental side, but we were put together, in fact, by the dairy industry with a nutritionist, Victor Filgoni, uh, who is also uh, in, in Battle Creek in Michigan, uh, to try to bridge that and, and, and bridge this gap that we sometimes have uh, in, between disciplines. So the question we had, and I start with, is should we all become vegan uh, to make a difference in our world? And we'll see, we'll, we'll, we'll see at the end uh, the, the conclusion uh, what we have. But of course, I will, I will start with Chicago survival food. And you've heard these 36 minutes of life lost per hot dog. Where is that coming from? Uh, and and why, how, how did we arrive uh, to that? And we published this paper. If you have here the link, I, I've sent the, uh, Amy, I've sent the, uh, the PowerPoint slide, if you want to post them at one point, uh, you, you, you can do it. Uh, and with this link, you have free access. Otherwise, this, this paper uh, must be paid, but you have free access and, and can read it online uh, as you like. And basically, we were looking at could small targeted, uh, targeted changes in our diet yield substantial gain, which would be more realistic than everybody becoming uh, vegetarian or vegan uh, in practice. So how, how could we guide uh, the population to do that? And that's where we, when we published that, uh, we communicated on a 36 minute uh, of life loss per hot dog. And this became really viral. I mean, uh, it, it got 120,000 like on, on the CNN Instagram and a reach of about 1.3 billion people or the potential risk reach uh, worldwide, which, which was very interesting and, and, and stimulating, if you like, uh, in, in that case. So what about this, this hot dog uh, and, and how do we arrive uh, to this uh, 36 minutes of life lost? If we start, what we do, we start here. If I have my beef hot dog, I start looking at the composition of, of the hot dog and in a hot dog of 140 gram, we have in fact 61 gram of processed meat, which is here in, in red, okay? And uh, per, per serving of it for, for one hot dog, uh, we have also, which might be detrimental, some sodium and some trans fats that are here. But we also have some positive, small about one or two gram of fibers, uh, some polyunsaturated fat and some calcium that we have here. And so when, when we calculate that, we, we have not exactly given or studied a, be a hot dog, but we studied, in fact, the people of the global burn disease has looked people eating one more serving of processed meat, what is their, the, the incidence on their life expectancy? And when, when we see that, uh, it's studied for 50 different diseases, but in particular, processed, uh, uh, processed meat has in, in influence on ischemic heart disease. And these uh, 61 gram of processed meat, well, per gram of processed meat, we are losing nearly half a minute of life or of healthy life. It's not only prolonging your life, it's uh, prolonging your healthy life without uh, free, of, free of, of disease. And if we combine this 61 gram times 0.45, we get 27 minutes loss per serving. This is just with the processed meat. We have about one gram of sodium, which give us another plus seven minutes. And we have trans fat another three minutes. So total like uh, is um, about 30, 37 minutes uh, here of, of life. And we gain, we see, we have, we, we gain one minute here uh, in that case. So overall, that's how we arrive at this point here without 36 minutes loss here per hot dog. And so that was just, an example, uh, but 
But then we could look at different type of, of food. And you see here, your salted peanuts on the other extreme, I have my beef hot dog here on the left. The salted peanut is around the 25 minutes here uh, of life gain associated with the nuts and seeds. And you see here the different risk factor uh, going from uh, uh, here beneficial like fruit, legume, vegetable, nuts and seed and fibers, whereas detrimental would be the processed meat, sodium, uh, trans fat, and also uh, uh, sweetened uh, beverages uh, in that case. You see that in between these two extremes, you have quite a few dishes, chicken wings, because of the sodium, you have five minutes lost. That's already better than a hot dog. A veggie pizza is about neutral. So an apple pie where your fruit here uh, are positive, but you have some trans fat uh, in your pie, which, which uh, compensate for it. Uh, fried beans, legumes are really interesting here plus 10 minutes. And here baked salmon is also interesting and give you uh, these are the minutes gain up here and, and lost uh, down there. And my, my collaborator, um, uh, Katerina Stiglianu, was, if you like, ambitious enough and, and crazy enough, in a sense, to repeat that, thanks also to our nutritionist, uh, Victor Folgoni, for 5,800 foods. And you have here grouped in 50 food groups, which are down here at the bottom. Okay, what are the minutes lost or gained associated with different group of food? And we find our hot dog here, around here, uh, and our nuts and seed, which are here, uh, again here. Now, uh, if, if we look, look a bit more uh, in detail, I don't know what's going on. Okay, now that's... Okay, um, what about the Chicago style hot dog? Because that's already better. We have the hot dog, but we have uh, uh, leg, uh, vegetables which are uh, offered uh, often in the stadium. So you gain six minutes. So it's not sufficient to compensate where you look here. You, you arrive perhaps at 30 minutes lost instead of 36. It's already better, but not quite good here. Now, if I disclose my origin, uh, I'm, I'm uh, issued from a, a, a person from the Gruyere region, uh, Chateau de Gruyere you have here uh, in this wonderful pre-Alps uh, region with in Valaisanne. Uh, my mom was from Valais. And, and by the way, uh, I must have probably some uh, connection with our ambassador, uh, uh, Mr. Pitlou uh, in, in New York. Uh, uh, in that case, because we, we are coming from the same uh, original, from the same village on my mem site. Now, having that here, the Gruyere is, of course, the Gruyere region. And here you have the raclettes coming from the, the valleys uh, region, Bagne and, and, and other valleys. So what about a Gruyere or raclette in terms of environmental impact and in terms uh, especially of nutritional impact uh, in that case. First, they are good. So perhaps we can enhance our life also being happy to have that. Now, how good or bad are they? If we look the dairy products uh, in, in our field here, uh, here in the middle, we have, the, these are different dairy products. And you see cheese being here, the, the different cheeses being here. Basically, uh, uh, with, with dairy products, the calcium is positive and it's compensated by the sodium, especially so, so milk would be really neutral. We are a bit detrimental here with the um, with, with a, a salty cheese like, like Gruyere uh, uh, or with a, with a raclette in that case, but not that much. So uh, I would say th these are close to neutral. Uh, so welcome in Switzerland and for our Swiss dishes, if you want. Uh, of course, even better to take fruits or vegetables or the legumes, uh, which are here on the uh, positive side uh, in that case. 
Okay, so now the, I, I spoke about the nutrition. We can, we can also look here, but we would like also to look at what are the climate change impact and the air pollution. And look, let's look at it uh, with, with pizza. And we, we had studied, in fact, 78 uh, different pizza. I just take an extract here. And you see here on the left, the extra meat pizza that we have here. And you see, as you decrease the amount of processed meat in your pizza, and uh, you, are, you are improving it and reducing, we have here the minutes of life lost for serving, I've inversed the scale. So here is the loss. Down is the gain. And you see that your tomatoes, your vegetables in your pizza uh, are down here. When you increase your uh, vegetables, that start to be more interesting. And you start compensating uh, at least partly the sodium and, and you are close to zero. Bean and veggie would bring you to uh, nearly zero. No cheese. I would not consider that as a pizza, being neighbor from Italy, uh, uh, I don't think it really qualifies. But you could have a uh, Hawaii pizza where you have some fruit here, which is really neutral in that case. Now, how does that this correlate with environmental impact? And that's interesting to see that the two main impacts of the agriculture production are here. The uh, the, the climate change, the carbon footprint, which is expressed in kilo CO2 equivalent. So that includes methane and, and CO2. And we see very similar pattern between what we have here for the nutrition up here and what we have here for the carbon footprint. So here, the, 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 the best uh, pizza for the nutrition is also the best for the environment. And you see here the ammonia emission which create these fine particulates uh, here are also minimal when we have the, the, the most nutrition. It's not always the case, but it's, it's often uh, some correlation. So uh, let, let's a bit classify all our different foods. And to do that, I put, and it's, a, it, it's sad that I cannot be in Chicago because I have a big banner of, of uh, uh, what is that? Uh, about 15 feet by 15 feet, I could put on the on the ground, and we we can we can uh, uh, do it live. So now, I give you directly the results in that case. So we have here the carbon footprint, and this is in kilo carbon per serving of different foods that are represented by my small circle uh, with their respective photo here, and here on the horizontal axis. I have the minutes of healthy life gained and lost. So this is positive, this is negative. And we find back our hot dog here with our 36 minutes. You see here we are about uh, of life or some bacon that we, we could have in that case. Now, for the environment, in fact, this is really, you see here, beef is really, really high. Uh, about twice higher than we have here pork, okay, and lamb uh, here. And we see that even if the say it's the same animal, uh, it, it's about four times higher or even a bit more than the dairy product that we have uh, here with milk or, or, or cheese. Uh, in, in that case. So, so per serving, we have that the beef is about four times uh, either the, this or you have an egg uh, there, the poultry product, either chicken or egg, are also relatively, I would say, moderate. So what, what we did is classify the food item which are in, in the dark red. Here's the beef and the different uh, um, uh, uh, processed meat. We see that in the light red, we have like the meat pizza or here's a Coke, I mean, sugar sweetened beverages uh, with about, about 12 minutes lost per serving. Uh, we have a series like oils and so on, uh, uh, dairy product, which are a bit intermediary. They are what we have called here tolerable. Uh, I would say they, they, they you have better food item than that, but they are also not dramatically uh, high for the environment. 
And then you have positive food item. My surprise personally was, was twofold. Is one, in fact, the, the peanuts butter uh, comes out very nicely because of the nuts, because of the peanuts here. Uh, we could expect that fruit, vegetables uh, would be pretty good. We see that if, if vegetables are produced in a greenhouse, uh, in a heated greenhouse, that could be still, uh, uh, I mean, at the, bring it at the same level as animal food uh, in that case. And salmon also here could be important uh, for the environment, not negligible, I would say, but still substantially lower than the beef that we have here. Another surprise was, in fact, French fries uh, are nearly neutral. Uh, potato is, is not positive, sweet potato is, because of uh, having more fiber, potato doesn't bring much, but the, if it's, the, the fries are, are cooked in fresh oils, uh, then we have in fact the positive side of polyunsaturated fat, uh, which is in that case really nice. So how could we do uh, better? The idea is to say, okay, let's, instead of asking everybody to stop eating any meat, let's ask and suggest, let's, get rid here of, of this zone, this dark zone here, basically beef and processed meat in, in the first step to say, could, could we at least reduce our consumption of these? Perhaps not possible to completely eliminate it in Chicago, but, but reduce it uh, in, in, uh, in that case. And when we do that, uh, that would represent about 200 calorie, a kilocalorie, that's about uh, one tenth of our diet, 10% of our diet, if we do uh, that change. So, I mean, changing 10% of a diet, I think that that's, that's imaginable that we can reach that. And if we do that, we can gain per day about 48, 46 to 48 minutes per day gain per person and reduce the carbon footprint here by about a third uh, for uh, the carbon footprint of our, um, uh, of our diet uh, itself. So that's a substantial reduction that we can reach uh, in, in that case with only 10% of, of, of change, but choosing uh, uh, the item uh, that we are eliminating. Now, what should we replace it? by a mix, you have here a mix of healthy food, uh, the, probably those who are the most healthier per kilocalorie in that case. And these are, these are uh, the fruit, the vegetable, the nuts, uh, some, some uh, fish here uh, that we can uh, substitute in that case. Don't think that if you eat too much, I mean, don't live on peanuts because they are really good because above 30 gram or even 23 gram per day, you don't have additional benefits. So you, don't, you cannot live forever just with peanuts. Uh, we'll have to uh, account for a, a diversity of food, which is the beautiful side of life that we have this beautiful diversity uh, in the world uh, that we cherish. I was, um, two years ago, I, I was on sabbatical uh, for a month in Singapore and there, uh, if you have the opportunity to go there, the food court, you have uh, a variety of different food from so many origins, the same court. It was just beautiful uh, to see uh, these, these food courts and the variety of food uh, that we, we had. Let's, let's now, until now I've looked, and, and that was our, our, our innovation, was to bring these this results from this big study made by thousands of scientists, global benefit disease, but bring it at the level of individual food. Now, if we look at the diet, an overall diet, we see that the, this is the ideal diet in a sense, and you could save up to like two hours per day. That's a lot. In practice, I think we, we have to be a bit more modest. It, it, it's probably uh, a slightly less than that. Uh, but, but it's interesting to look what we could improve compared to the present diet. This is a present US diet. And this is male 
and this is female. And bad news for us males, because here I have the, 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 the positive are over zero. This is gained and this is lost. And we see that female here have a gain of about 15 minutes of healthy life per day compared to, to, to male. And basically you see this is, this is related to two things, to the sodium, which is much higher with male, and to the um, processed meat, which is also higher, and to the red meat. So this is really a meat uh, question here where we see a, a large difference. On, on the positive side, it's about similar. I mean, males are eating more, so they get also uh, uh, a bit more positive, in fact, but especially uh, uh, lose uh, associated to that. So now, what is interesting is, what is the potential for improvement when we look at that? So I ask my students, usually I give them 10 minutes, interpret this graph and then and, and look at it. So you see that the whole grain here has a big potential and we are not using much of this uh, big potential. So uh, uh, increasing our whole grain consumption uh, for example, taking rice, uh, uh, brown rice instead of, of white rice uh, could be an example, of course, uh, uh, whole grain bread, uh, bread uh, that, that, that we, what would be good. A second one is the nuts and seed. We see that we have here also a potential for improvement. And in the US, we don't eat enough fruits that we have here. Uh, that we could, in particular, I would say, increase uh, in, in that case. And of course, reduce the detrimental items uh, here. But that, that's typically three, three area where we could do uh, substantially better. Also, the amount of fish, which is the omega-3 here from seafood, uh, could be increased here substantially uh, in, in, in our case. Uh, here. Interesting also to see between white and Asian average consumption uh, in the US, we see also that the Asian are about 24 minutes of healthy life per day uh, compared to, to the, the, the white. Uh, and, and that's associated, you see, uh, less processed meat. This is, this is a, a big factor uh, in that case. But they could do even better if they would have a bit, a bit less sodium uh, in that case, which is, which is important in the Asian uh, dishes. Uh, they are sometimes pretty salty uh, here. The US diet could, could gain about 50 minutes compared to the, so the US healthy diet, the recommendation uh, of, of FDA and USDA, uh, which, is, which is here could be uh, an improvement, but still, not that ideal, we could do even better than that uh, in, uh, in that case. Okay, so that was the, the um, uh, nutrition side. If we look at the environmental assessment here by diet, uh, gender and race the same, we see that uh, again, female are in addition uh, having an improved uh, consumption, we see that for the environment, the beef, which is here in gray, is absolutely substantial. Okay. Um, uh, second is, is here the, the, the dairy is important uh, dairy product, but is, is relatively uh, similar uh, everywhere. Uh, and all the plant based, which represent a, a large part of our calorie, represent a limited, in fact, amount. Uh, in terms of environmental impact. So again, female are polluting less. It's associated basically with eating a lower kilocalorie and an Asian diet is, is a bit better. Now, what, what about a European diet and a, a Swiss diet? Uh, we, we just have a paper. In fact, it, it's getting out just uh, probably, that we have resubmitted the proofs uh, uh, today. Um, and, and which, which has been accepted and will be published in the coming days. And that was a, a project from the Swiss, um, National Swiss Foundation. Um, 
and and uh, led with my when I left Switzerland, we founded a company which has now offices in in Boston and Paris and and Switzerland uh, and and different countries. And uh, this this project carried out by, by this Quantis company, uh, we looked and and we show the same difference between male and female. That here here the detrimental are up. Uh, the, the, the female are doing better than the male. Now, what is interesting and is new here, we have here vegan and a vegetarian diet. And we see that for nutrition, it, it's relatively comparable. There is not much different and, and because dairy or, or poultry products are, are about uh, here, but substantially better. We have here nearly 50 meats of life gain compared to the average uh, Swiss diet. Uh, with, with vegan and vegetarian. And interestingly, we see that for the environment, we also have reduced this time a uh, two third. Here is the vegetarian and here vegan. So here the vegan make a difference uh, and, and, and go a bit, a bit lower. But we see also, also already the vegetarian is, is uh, substantially uh, more interesting uh, in that case. Also interesting, uh, to finish for the, with this study is that the, the, the colleagues who led this study uh, were, were social nutritionists and uh, they look at the intention to eat LC and our, our HENI score, our, our impact that we have here. Uh, this is, this is microdali, which you divide by two, you get the minutes of life uh, here. And you see that the people who intend to, to eat LC tend to eat healthier. Okay, now what was interesting is the intention to eat a sustainable diet doesn't translate so much in a lower carbon footprint. It's really nearly equal. It's, it's the people who are eating more plant-based here products uh, or, or I would say vegetarian with dairy products uh, that, that uh, can maintain a lower carbon footprint uh, in, in that case. And this lead me to the question, an, an important question is, what about organic versus healthy? And uh, my, my, when, when we studied the impact of pesticide, we, we published that in, in uh, so it's a work we published in 2012, where we were looking at all the pesticides or, or, or applied in uh, the European Union in 2003 we arrive with the impact of pesticides, which are mostly in fruit, vegetables, grape, and wine. This is, this is really the contribution, but what we arrive is less a, than a minute, even a tenth of a minute per person per day. And of course there is uncertainty with that in all that, and it, but it's maximum 2.5 minutes per person per day, which is relatively small compared to the benefit of vegetables, which are seven minutes, of fruit, which are 10 minutes in the current diet, but potentially could be up to 25 minutes per day or 16 if we would eat the, the maximum beneficial amount of, of like 360 gram or 250 gram per day. So the priority is clearly not, ne not necessarily to buy, to, to, to eat organic. It's, if you can afford it, it's okay. It's good. It could be good, but for the environment, it, it, it doesn't change much. The reason is basically you have less fertilizer. This is good for the environment, but you need more area. So you, 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 your production is a bit lower. And, and so often the, this is about neutral in that case. But the priority would be to have affordable fruits and vegetables. And uh, very important is don't buy organic to re and reduce the amount of fruit and veggie purchase. Uh, in that case, we, we really need a priority uh, in our uh, policy also, uh, be it in Switzerland or here in the US, to subsidize the most healthy food. And uh, here we see that where are the subsidies going? They go mostly, we even have subsidi subsidized for tobacco, tobacco. Uh, not much, but livestock, corn, soybean, uh, these are in fact, uh, mostly uh, for, for feedstock uh, use. Uh, we see cotton here, the rice and the wheat are subsidized, but we have only basically 
2% of the subsidy, which are for healthy and sustainable food. So this is a completely disconnect because what is healthy and sustainable and what is subsidized? And we need to recalibrate that. We need a correction uh, towards that. I will, I will not continue more. I just say it's a very exciting time for, for a scientist like me because these minutes of life gain and loss that we have for uh, more than 5,000 food items, we can now compare it and with published results where we look at chemical in about 10,000 uh, products. We can compare it with pollution where we get about the same living one day in New Delhi is about uh, eating a hot dog per day. In that case, we can gain. I commute by bike every day, so I gain my 20 minutes per day here and occupational exposure can also matter in that case. How you can get all that? We uh, had created a website, but what we are working on in coming in June is work with a colleague in California. And you have this I Eat Better app, which is uh, free for its standard version. And the uh, score, you could get your minutes of life uh, in, in this uh, app uh, early June. That should be in the new version. Uh, we, we've just signed a contract with them. And, and uh, that I'm very excited about that, that it will be easy to calculate uh, what you eat and, and what you, you have. So should we all become vegan? Basically, to be seen on the long term, but for now, small targeted realistic changes. And that's why I was saying targeting in the sense reduction in beef, reduction in processed meat, reduction then perhaps in, in the different red meat can make a big difference one food at a time. And as I said, this, this in fact uh, work was, uh, uh, it was very interesting to see the Dairy Research Institute, which is in Rosemont. Uh, near the airport in Chicago, uh, and the Swiss National Foundation who, who finance uh, part of this research uh, in that case, plus I would say the, the, the MQ project at the University of Michigan. Thank you very much, and I'm available for questions. Merci Olivier, merci beaucoup. Uh, it is an exciting time. It is exciting to see that you can profile um, how many minutes is lost for each uh, sportsman like maybe a soccer fan a football fan a basketball fan depending what food they eat at the at the event so i'm really excited to learn more about that um we have a few questions here so let me uh proceed but yeah that that was great i think and we can't wait to have the app because it will make us much more conscious uh of the impact of the choices uh we make uh when we decide to eat certain food and the impact on the planet as well um Okay, from Amal, there's a question that says the study is done in Europe where pesticides regulations are different from USA. How does it compare with organic versus regular veg and fruits in the US, if you know the answer to that? Um, so we have not taken, we, we, we are in fact uh, uh, presently looking partly at that. Uh, I would not expect substantial differences here. Uh, I, I see the, the, some chemicals have been banned in Europe a bit more, uh, mm -hmm. but for pesticide, uh, I would say uh, 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 the difference is probably more for the ecosystem, where uh, uh, chemicals like atrazine uh, are still used in the US, were banned in fact in Europe, but mostly because of the environmental on the, the freshwater ecosystem in that case. So I would say I don't expect too much difference. Where I expect the difference is with developing country, because several of the chemicals who've been banned in, in, the, in, in, in the developed world are still sold, and that's not correct, that's not uh, appropriate, are still sold by chemical company in developing country, countries, uh, and that's sad to see, to see it. See, it's sad to see asbestos still, still being used uh, in Colombia, in, in, in different countries, and when I, I Colombia was trying to, to ban asbestos. Russia, in fact, exercised uh, a pressure not to do that because they were selling asbestos. And these people who are installing asbestos, it will cost, cost them 100 times what, I mean, the, 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 what they have with asbestos the day they want to clean it. And, and it's really not good. So uh, in, in that case. So my answer is, is for US, I think, I think um, the, 
so far, what we have, the impact of pesticide is limited. The exception might be on endocrine disruptor uh, for, for uh, hormone uh, uh, interacting pesticide. That might be more problematic than what was the study we did were uh, estimated. Merci, Olivier. Uh, a question from uh, ID Rosie. Uh, it's a tough one. How many minutes of healthy living are we uh, are lost with one delicious Swiss bratwurst? Not different <laughs> from a hot dog, I think. Uh, could could depending on the size of your bratwurst, it could be more than sixty one grams, so it could be worse. <laughs> so we have to keep that in check. I also have a, a question from Alexandra who asks: Does food waste also contribute? heavily to carbon footprint. Uh, that, that, that's one thing I, I didn't take the time to, to discuss. Uh, yes, and, and we are wasting up to 30% of, of the different foods. And this is about 10% in the supply chain, but 20% is at home. Wow. Uh, while, while consuming or in restaurants. And um, this, this we have a potential of easily reducing, in a sense, by avoiding the, the waste. So the first things I think we should do, I was horrified the other day at the TV when there, I think it was, it was, uh, 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 no, it, it, uh, anyway, the, 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 one advertisement which was saying, oh, uh, and, and that was trying to fight obesity, but to say the problem is I finished my plate. I've been told to finish my plate, this is a problem. And I don't think it's a problem. The problem is to, to fill the plate three times what we need or twice what we need and, and to leave that. So it was interesting in the cafeteria here at the University of Michigan, we, we had the, an initiative to reduce loss. And basically what they did is make portion which are half of what they, they had and people can come as many time as they want. And that, is reduce substantially, in fact, the waste uh, when when doing that. So let's let's serve small plates and and come back uh, for the next raclette in case uh, <laughs> you want the raclette in, in that case. <laughs> but but it, it's really substantial and and we can do a much better work uh, job with that. Yeah, and it also really depends what you put on your plate. I did notice with my friends from Europe that they always, from France particularly, always finish their plate. Uh, and they eat very healthy plates, let's put it that way. Uh, we also really, I think lots of people are concerned about the future uh, of food. Uh, and Marie-Simone is asking if insects could be a good substitute for meat. And I'm curious to know where we at with what they call molecular meat and if it's gonna taste good too. Yeah, uh, diff different things. I don't have, we don't have data on insects because we don't have too many people eating it. So I have no <laughs> idea if it's uh, beneficial or not. Uh, I know when, when I was, after my studies, I had a friend who went uh, for radio in Ecuador and uh, he, he, he was making us photo of the big hands that he was eating. He was offered to eat as a, as a delicious, uh, <laughs> as a delicatess uh, uh, there. Um, I think the, 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 the question is a bit the production, in fact, uh, uh, which might be, in fact, efficient for insects because they grow very quickly and, and, mm -hmm. and for the environment might be good. I have no idea for the nutrition side. Uh, well, it's a question of culture. We can, uh, <laughs> we can adapt, in a sense. Uh, if we have nothing else, we probably move to that. <laughs> that's scary. Uh, and what about molecular food? The, the food, the meat that's grown uh, more and more in uh, labs. Uh, yeah. Does it taste good? Will it need a tremendous amount of sauce to, to make it taste good? The, 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 well, one thing if uh, I sometimes eat a veggie burger, okay? Uh, oh. But, but uh, you, in fact, I want my veggie burger to look like veggies. Because the more, the more you transform it, the more you make it like meat, the more you add saturated fat also, and the more you have additives and the more it, it's processed food in that case. So I would, I would recommend if you, I mean, it, it, it will be better than processed meat, 
But to make it better, don't try to make it look like Nestle meat. And and I think we we now we have we are used to have this sort of veggie burger. Why not have? I mean that it looks like vegetables. Like the other thing, what sometimes they do is they add quite a bit of sodium to make it more tasty. And that the other things you want a bit to avoid in in the story. I'm checking the chat line to see if someone has put it. There's a couple more here. Um, I think we know the answer to that, but let's ask the question to make sure we do. Is olive oil better than butter for cooking? Uh, answer is yes. And, and margarine will be even better than, I think, uh, olive oil uh, or oil based, uh, olive based margarine or something like that. Uh, the, but it, it, it was interesting among the dairy products. In fact, the, the, the butter and the cream is much less healthy and, and we see the difference on cardiovascular disease uh, compared to, for example, uh, milk or, or yogurt. So, so uh, even within a category, you have large differences and, and butter is not great for that. Uh, so that animal, animal fat, not yeah. great. Just, just right. Just one, one story, uh, which was very interesting. I had two moms uh, who, who wrote me an email and say, you know, my, my children, and, and, uh, in fact, had, had a look at your research. And uh, the other day, they came back home and they say, instead of asking for an apple, they say, mom, give us 10 minutes of life. <laughs> and that was, that was pretty cute because... Um, I, I was working with other nutritionists and, and it's very hard to communicate to children. And this metric, they pick it up and, and they, they even joke with it, which is, which is cute. Bien, merci, Olivier. We're arriving at the end of our hour uh, en Suisse uh, with Marie-Simone, Bruno Riff and Olivier Joliette. Uh, mille merci uh, to all of them for their contribution to the program. Mille merci to you all for being with us. Uh, we want to say a special thanks to your generosity and donation, uh, which is something that happens on our registration form. We just want to say that every little bit counts for organizations like ours. Uh, I also want to say that this program is made possible thanks to the support of the Swiss Benevolent Society. And Le Festival de la Francophonie is possible thanks to the support of our Franco partners in Chicago and the Federation of Alliance Française in the USA. We hope we can, you can join us tomorrow when we have more food talk. Uh, I think Olivier might not approve as we will do some French pastry when our children, uh, the children from our kids center joined force with chef Sophie from Vanille Patisserie here in Chicago, one of the best uh, French pastry um, uh, retailer. Uh, and we will learn how to make a classic financier. It's a piece of cake and it's family fun this program is also online, uh, free in English, and it starts at a family time of 4.30 p.m. Uh, now I would like to ask you to unmute yourself and give a big round of applause to all the participants to this program. Merci Olivier, Bruno, Marie-Simone, merci à Alexandra for technical support and question. Uh, and again, thanks to all of you. Uh, we hope to see you often in March, uh, both online or on site as we restart some of our program. Alors, je vous dis au revoir, à la prochaine. Merci. Au revoir. 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 Au revoir.